Recording. Well, that sounds pretty good. So, I guess it's a test to see if the uh, sound's coming through pretty clearly as well. So far, so good, eh? Fun times. It's been quite the long, uh, it's been quite the long winter here in Chicago, and uh, we're finally getting some uh, some sun out here some better weather so we're all out here enjoying the time trying to take advantage of the great weather and hopefully if the fully service the Ural so hopefully it's gonna be dependable as Ural's can be or as much as they can be they're not exactly known for their reliability the positive of these bikes though is that they are uh, pretty uh, pretty simple not very complicated bikes. The only thing even slightly complicated is the fact that it's a boxer engine, as you can tell. Old BMW copy from the war, so uh, not the most technologically advanced. Just checking to make sure we don't have any leaks. Uh, generally speaking, it seems to be, it's been pretty, um, Pretty good for me, but as you can see, it's 33,000 kilometers. I think it's like 18,000 miles. Quite, quite a lot for uh, for a bike, but it's the only reason I could actually afford one. Um, brand new. I saw somebody selling one out the door for like 35k. So yeah, that's not gonna. It's not gonna be something I'd be spending money on. Um, I could pick up a uh, used one for um, you know between eight to 10k. Um, but you want to aim for one that's 20, 10 and newer. I mean, obviously, if you've got the cash for it, go for the uh, 2021 and newer, which is the, uh, the Series 2 electronic ignition. Um, because those generally tend to run a lot better. These bikes are uh, not only not known for their reliability, but because of the nature of... Um, of these engines and the way that they're built, um, just from a design perspective, they can't really uh, go much higher than uh, about 60, 65 miles an hour. The 21s and 22s can do full highway speeds of 85. But even then, I think the uh, the problem isn't whether or not it can get up to 85. It's a question of whether it'll sustain 85. And uh, most of these bikes. I just can't, you know. They're they're happy around the uh, 45 to 55 mark, as you can tell from the sound of the engine. It's already sort of pushing it a little bit more than it would like. It really likes to put it around at 45. That seems to be its like sweet spot. Much more than that, and it uh, starts to protest. Um, and it's a four-speed gearbox, so not particularly. Uh, fast by any means but it does a decent job gets me around town it's actually what I was thinking about recently you know I've got a, uh, a sport bike uh, Ducati 996 that's in the garage as well and I find myself uh, driving this one a lot more you know just the uh, practicality of it um, the ease of use I mean I uh, you know, the Ducati, I'm always worried about whether it's gonna, you know, if I'm gonna drop it or, or uh, even though I haven't done that yet, you know, if, if anything's gonna get damaged on the bike, it's a beauty. Uh, but this one, this one's the beast, you know? It's like, uh, I got it for the price that I did. Um, it wasn't that much cheaper, actually. It was right around 8,000. Um, I got it for the price that I did at the time because it does have some, um, some mild rust issues. Um, but uh, it's definitely not a beauty by any means, so that allows me to enjoy it and not feel like I have to treat it like a princess. So I've definitely used this uh, more than most any bike I've owned. Uh, it's great for just doing a grocery run, you know. It's, uh, 
the extra, uh, not only do we have the sidecar seat, but you also have the boot. Uh, there's actually a trunk in there that, uh, that gives you lots of space. I mean, I've actually taken this to Costco. You can buy uh, costco size stuff and still fit in here, which is amazing. And it's real easy to drive. I mean, it's not like it's uh, demanding on your body. It's not easy by any means either, because uh, something that uh, a lot of motorcycle guys don't know until they've started uh, of driven their first uh, sidecar is that it handles very differently to a regular motorcycle when you let off the gas you'll see that it pulls to the left when you get on the gas it pulls to the right and so you gotta you gotta be very careful with your steering to sort of counter steer against those tendencies and then speaking of counter steering there is no counter steering so uh, push left to go left or, or uh, vice versa you know it's, uh, there's no leaning into it there's no counter steering which is very counterintuitive for um, someone who's been riding motorcycles for a long time you know actually that kind of reminds me is a similar thing that happened when we were riding the Can-Am I was uh, so me and my dad went to do a test ride of a Can-Am many many years ago and one of the things I found most disconcerting about that was how hard it was to uh, to drive, ride, whatever you want to call it. Um, you really had really had a tough time because you'd hit the gas and the thing, or when you're turning, and the thing would have this really weird sort of sensation where I was expecting it to sort of do the things that my motorcycle did because of how it looks, but it handles very very differently, um, much like this bike actually. Handles very, very differently. I think the difference between the Can-Am and this for me is just the practicality that you get. And uh, honestly, like, uh, you know, you get a lot of looks on this bike. It is, for what it's worth, a fun bike to put around. People talk about the Ural delay factor, which is UDF. It literally just means people stop you to ask you about the bike all the time. It's, a, it's just a... It's a fact of life when you ride one of these. If you want attention, get one of these, for sure. Lots of people actually stop me. Um, it's not just because of how cool it looks, but, but um, you know, this is a, uh, a Russian bike. So there are people from uh, Eastern Europe and uh, uh, some of the, you know, from Russia itself who kind of grew up seeing these. And actually, weirdly enough, uh, you know, this was a copy of a BMW the Ural is the Russian copy, and there was a uh, Chinese copy as well called the Changjiang. The Changjiang is actually uh, well known as a uh, Chinese military bike. And uh, so you, you have people stop me. I actually went to uh, a good friend's house, and uh, his neighbor was uh, is from China, uh, mainland China that is. And he stopped me immediately, and he was like, "Oh, I remember these bikes." I was like, "Yeah, that's probably a Changjiang, not a uh, not a Ural, but." Um, they're essentially both copies of the same bike, uh, the BMW sidecar bike from uh, from whenever it was back in the mists of time. And they've evolved quite differently. If you look at a Changjiang, uh, a recent one, and, uh, and a Ural, you'll see they're uh, they've gone completely different directions. You know, a Changjiang tends to be uh, lower and uh, and looks more sporty, weirdly enough. Um, but from what I've heard, and this is obviously you know just what I've heard, but I've heard that the uh, the Euros are actually, uh, <laughs> this feels so weird to say this, better engineered, uh, at least the more recent models, than the uh, Chang Chang. That's what I've been told. Uh, the Chang Chang's not, not only just uh, quality issues, which, again, it's weird that we're saying that about Euro being better quality than anything else, but anyway, um, it's not just quality issues, it's also a pure engineering uh, um, aspect of it. The new Urals with their uh, electronic fuel injection is, uh, they're quite good. Um, and I want to say, 